Now, there's no fitness YouTuber that has a deep knowledge of every aspect of nutrition and training. It just doesn't exist. But most certainly, you can have a working knowledge of many different principles. And of course, in some areas, you will have a deeper knowledge where you have a deeper interest. So within our bodies, we have triacylglyceride, this stored fat within adipose cells. And so this video is going to be a simplification of the biochemistry of fat loss. That's all you need. You only need to understand the basics. I'm not even going to put in the, the carbon and hydrogen atoms in my little drawings here. I'm going to break it down very simply. The first one is this process of lipolysis. And lipolysis is the breaking down of this triglyceride, this stored fat, into more usable forms to then be used up and burnt up as energy. And the molecule of triacylglyceride will contain a glycerol backbone uh, bound to fatty acids. And all that's happening through lipolysis is the breakdown of the glycerol and the fatty acids. So the end result of lipolysis will be you will separate the, glyc the glycerol from the fatty acids. And it's these fatty acids which your body is then going to use up as energy because you are training, you're going to the gym, you're challenging your body, you're drawing energy from these fat stores in your body and it's these fatty acids which are a more usable form. And so how does it do this? Well, essentially what it's doing is cleaving the bonds between the glycerol and the fatty acids. Uh, through an enzyme called lipase. And this actual process is called hydrolysis, which involves a chemical breakdown involving water, but that doesn't matter. This enzyme lipase will break down this triglyceride molecule and it will produce glycerol and fatty acids. And this is step one. And step two involves the transport of these fatty acids through the bloodstream to the target cell where it's going to be burnt up as energy. Now, when the fatty acid is drawn into the bloodstream, there is a protein called serum albumin, which, if you like, acts as a taxi. It helps to transport that fatty acid into the target cell. I've drawn some wheels here as though it's a taxi taking those fatty acids to where it needs to go, to where you are putting the demands on your body. And so that's the mobilization of these fatty acids. And then step three is what we, we know as beta oxidation. You may have heard of fat oxidation. And this is where the fatty acids are converted into uh, usable energy, ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Now the issue here is once the fatty acids enter the target cell, they will enter and, and be stored in the cytoplasm of the cell. But we want those fatty acids to move from the cytoplasm to the mitochondria, the mitochondrial matrix. And it's in the mitochondria, which you can think of as the brain of the cell, where this energy production process occurs. And it's much more complicated than I'm drawing here. It involves a citric acid cycle. But the way that that fatty acid is transported involves a substance called carnitine. Now, you may have heard of carnitine. You may see it in 7-Eleven, in all these diet drinks. Carnitine, carnitine, carnitine. And what it does is it transports the fatty acids from the cytoplasm to the mitochondria where it is burnt up uh, as usable energy. The form of energy that the body uses is called ATP. And that's the process of fat burning, very simply. And in this video, I'm going to give you a clear application of how understanding this basic chemistry will help you decide whether you should eat carbohydrates and what type of carbohydrates you can eat for fat loss. And so I'm going to give you an application to your life now and to fat loss for you right now. So let's go back to this, this process of lipolysis, the breaking down of that triglyceride, that stored fat that we do we want to get rid of? We want to lose body fat. And now, in order to do this, there are certain hormones which contribute to this process of lipolysis, such as adrenaline and also glucagon. They help promote this process. But there's also a hormone which inhibits this process, which inhibits the effectiveness of this process. And that's called insulin. And so you may have heard of insulin. So, we, so if we know that insulin can inhibit this process of breaking down your fat, then we need to think about managing our insulin levels. And this is where many diets that involve fasting, intermittent fasting, low carbohydrate, zero carbohydrate, ketogenic diets, this concept of how insulin impacts lipolysis is at the core of the thinking behind many of these eating protocols. 
And so carbohydrates are the main culprit in terms of increasing insulin. When we increase this hormone insulin, this lipolysis process will be inhibited. Why, why does insulin increase? Because when you put those carbohydrates into your body, that the carbohydrates will, will be formed as blood sugar in your blood. Now, if there was no insulin, you would die. That that blood sugar cannot remain at those levels. Your body needs to shuttle that the sugar in the blood into the cells to be used up, or most likely, if you're sedentary and unhealthy, to be stored as fat. And so carbohydrates have the, the largest impact on the insulin response, increasing insulin. Now, when you eat protein, you also have an insulin response, but it's much less significant. But it's not just as simple as saying carbohydrates are bad, let's get rid of them. Again, that's going off the deep end with this information. There are different types of carbohydrates, and different types of carbohydrates have a different insulin response. Artificial sugars, processed sugars, your, your ice cream, your chocolate, they will have a larger insulin response than vegetables and low GI fruits, berries, your greens. So most certainly, not all carbohydrates are, are made equal. People will argue that oh, all carbohydrates are processed as sugars. Yes, they are. But different types of carbohydrates have a different insulin response. Therefore, we know by biological fact that the quality of your carbohydrates matter. And so most certainly by eating vegetables and berries and these sort of foods which keep your insulin levels low and stable, you are helping to allow that fat burning process to take place. The more artificial sugars, processed foods that you're throwing into your body, the more you are increasing your insulin and disrupting that process. But, but does that mean that you should never eat sugar and ice cream? Well, no, that would be ridiculous. Look, we all need to have something that, you know, tastes a bit good and have some fun. So how would I take this information and apply it to me? How would I take this process of lipolysis and incorporate eating bad foods? Well, this is what I would do. The more trained you are, the more physically challenging exercise you do, the lower you will keep your insulin levels. And so what I would do is if I'm eating ice cream, maybe twice a week I'll have an ice cream, 200 calories. What I will do is make sure that I'm training on that day to keep my insulin levels low and stable. And in addition, I will make sure that I will incorporate that ice cream into my total calories for the day to make sure that I'm in caloric deficit. Now, if I do those two things and I eat that ice cream occasionally, it's completely insignificant in terms of the impact it has on my overall fat loss. And so that is how you can apply the theory to practical application. And that's all fitness is. That's all nutrition is. That's all training in the gym is. The application of theory to practical. And that's really what my channel is about. And so most certainly you can lose fat by going zero carb. You can go low carb. You can carb cycle. You can have moderate carbs. But no matter what eating protocol you decide fits your lifestyle and your needs, you must apply the information that we have. And this basic information will help you to filter out the disproportionate nonsense that we see in social media. I, I read so much nonsense and I don't actually comment on it because this is my reply. I've decided that I'm going to make these videos as my way of replying to the complete nonsense that we see in YouTube fitness. And so I hope this video is useful. Part two is going to look at different types of cardio for fat loss. And I'm James Linker. This is Shredded Sports Science. I'll see you soon.